service book in front of me here. Um, surprisingly, poor say every 20,000 miles. Really? On an engine like this? I mean, they would know. They designed it and built it, so I'm sure it's good for 20,000. I bought the car with 58,000 miles on it. It now has 68,000 miles and is due for another service. I would personally like to be servicing these cars every 5,000 miles and I know that there's a lot of people out there that would agree with this. Um, putting fresh oil in every 5,000 miles has got to be the way to go. Um, it was a little bit late this time um, with uh, 10,000 miles. I had a problem with my Seat Leon last year. The engine blew up unfortunately so I had to use the force for work and I really just didn't have time to get it in to get it serviced. But it's here now, it's out of storage, it's ready to be used for the summer. So we are now looking to give it a service and the stuff that we're going to be using, if uh, our friend Josh over here can just pan around, um, we've got the uh, oil, we're also putting a uh, cabin filter in, we've got the air filter, we've got uh, oil filter here and it's having new spark plugs as well. So um, cars on the ramp, uh, the first thing that Matt's going to do for us is going to be plugging it in to see if we've got any error codes. Um, hopefully we haven't got any and then we're on to the service. So let's go guys, let's get it done. Here we are in the workshop at Avon Auto Clinics and with me is Matt who's going to be doing the service on the 911 today. So Matt, just uh, tell me, what are we going to be doing first? Well the first thing we're going to do is plug in our hotel uh, system to check, all, check for any faults in the car's ECUs. Excellent, well let's just hope there isn't any, so we'll get on with that. So Matt's in the car, he's got it all programmed in, or should I say connected in. There he is. So what are we actually doing now then, Matt? Right, well basically we're connected to the car and then this is going to run through an auto scan of yep. all the car's control units and uh, we'll uh, get a list of what control units have got any faults stored in them or whether they haven't. Hopefully we shouldn't see any. So do you necessarily get a light coming on the dashboard if you get a fault? Right, that depends on whether the fault is detrimental to the car or mm -hmm. not. Um, if you've got, say, a minor fault in a body control module, no, not normally. Right. Engine or any safety related uh, systems, then yes, okay. you will get a light on the dash. Uh, that beeping was it just scanning through the uh, Porsche stability management there, just for anyone that was wondering. Brilliant, okay, excellent stuff. So how are we looking at the moment then? Uh, we're just going through, as you can see, it's just going through each control unit in the car. Yeah. And uh, just coming up, there's no fault so far. Uh, we're 41% through the scan. So okay. We'll all be done in a few seconds. Brilliant stuff. Well, this is all very, uh, very impressive, but uh, yeah, I suppose uh, it just needs to be done just so that everything's uh, checked yeah. and, and safe. Yeah, so we can... Uh, get a good idea of how the cars uh, can networks and functioning and things like that and all the yeah. checking all the communication between the control modules so um yeah it's uh, worthwhile doing we do it on every car we bring in nearly brilliant So 
So what we're doing here then guys, we're checking the uh, suspension and wheel bearings, would that be right? Uh, checking the wheel bearings, um, play in the shocks um, and any play in the steering rack. Okay. So at the moment we're just going to check the tyre around, make sure there's no punctures in it or anything like that. Um, check the wear and things like that, make yep. sure it's not wearing evenly, make sure it doesn't need a wheel alignment or anything like that. Yeah, one of the things I have noticed is that my steering wheel is just slightly um, on the right hand side when you know we're going straight. So it may need a, a little bit of alignment, but I don't think it didn't seem like it's pulling oh, to any side. It doesn't look like the tyres have worn unevenly, there's no feathering, yeah. and they look like they're wearing nice and evenly. So okay. I'd imagine the steering's straight, but um, slightly off centre on the wheel, okay. uh, which could be corrected through some tracking. Okay, brilliant. So we've got seven millimetres of tread on that tyre. Again, nice even wear. Nothing to really uh, write home about. So just check the tyre over, make sure there's nothing in it. No damage. Cool. And again, just get a measurement of the tread. Again, seven millimetres. No damage, no cracking, no nicks to it, so all good. Mark has been avoiding the kerbs. Yes, just uh, a bit. Uh, also, we can check the brake disc for me. So there's no lipping on that. Uh, you can also visually inspect the pads, but we will be removing the wheels to check the brake lines, etc. So again, just a quick visual inspection of the brakes on the outside. Um, again, tyre wall check. Uh, next thing, check for any play. So, a bit of side to side, uh, up and down, check for any playing any of the suspension arms. And then give it a spin with your hand on the spring, and you can feel for any roughness in the wheel bearings. They're a big old wheel, aren't they? They are. They're a hefty old set of tyres, these are. Yeah. Yeah, Michelin Pilot's bought, so Mark's not skimped out on rubber here, which is probably <laughs> a good idea on your Porsche. <laughs> Again, just checking for damage to the tread or anything in it. Yeah, okay, well, what I want to do for the uh, for the guys watching is if we shine a torch on there I just want them to get some sort of idea of how big these uh, these tyres uh, are so on, on, on the back are, They're absolutely huge aren't they? Yeah, so these are a 295 35ZR19 Wow With a 100 Y rating um, They are extra load and I believe they are the actual Porsche M1 spec tyres Fantastic, oh that's alright then So we're going to do that on the uh, other rear one Okay, Josh, so what are we going to be doing now then? So we're going to be removing the oil caps. Yep. Um, so that the, there's no pressure left on the system. So when we come to drain the oil, yep. uh, it flows out freely. Okay. Well, we're under the car now. We're just about to drain the oil out. It's all coming undone, okay, Josh? Yeah. All seems to be free so far. Excellent stuff. So we'll just get our. Drain bucket ready, nice and slow. Here we go. Look at that. There's quite a lot of oil in there, isn't there? Lovely. So uh, we've run up the car for a little bit just to make sure that the oil's hot. And then we'll just all let it drain out. Okay, so as you can see, we're uh, pretty much drained off and um, Josh is now going to loosen up the filter and we're going to remove that. Okay, we're very careful right. that uh, we're nearly there. We don't get a load of oil coming out. <laughs> so I'm just stepping back slightly here. Okay, just let that drain for a second. And 
And there's your filter. Okay, look at that. So we're going to have a look at that a little bit later on, just to make sure that it's all clear. Okay. okay. Right, now we're going to take the old seal off. Obviously you should never, never put the old seals back in. So, I can go in the bin. Then we have our new seal, which can go back on. Make sure it's located okay. And then with these, I like to just get a bit of the old oil just around the outside, just to make sure that the O-ring doesn't get stuck on the way in. Then we can go for our nice new filter. And then we can uh, go back up to the car. What we'll do is just start it off by hand. Make sure it all goes in nicely. Yeah. So, just get it hand tight. You should never tighten these with a tool. Hand tight is enough. Just make sure that's on nicely. Okay. And then we'll just give it a clean off with a bit of brake cleaner. Make sure there's no excess oil. That is the filter replaced. Brilliant. And something can go back in. Again, making sure not to over tight. And again, We'll just give that a little clean up with some brake cleaner. So we've got no excess oil on the bottom of the car. Okay. There we go, we're all done. Uh, so right, we've uh, taken the oil filter out of the Porsche and here we have it on the bench. I've cut it in half just to inspect the pleats in the filter just so we can see what's, uh, what's going on and uh, make sure the filter's done this job and see if the engine is all sweet. So here is the filter cut in the half with the resin removed so we can open it right up. As you can see, it's done its job perfectly. There's no, no bits of metal in there or anything like that. It is just as you would expect it to find. Um, it's a good clean colour as well, which means the oil isn't isn't too burnt or anything like that. And no, no collapsing of the filter either. All the pleats are still intact, showing there's good filtration, good oil pressure. So, um, yeah. So guys, this is what we're putting in, the um, Shell Helix Ultra, fully synthetic motor oil. It's a 5W40 and yeah. it fulfills the Porsche A40 specification for this particular engine. Excellent. So, right, let's get that in then. So, how many litres does this hold, Matt? This, this engine? This engine holds eight and a half litres of oil. Eight and a half litres, well. Which, through this, uh, this tiny little filler tube is going to take a while. Yeah, so, <laughs> this, so this is the bit where I'm filming, but for you guys, it'll be speeded up um, into a matter of seconds. <laughs> So we're just about to take the air filter box out now. And Matt is just undo it, doing the clip there, disconnecting. The airflow meter. Yeah. We have a back solenoid here as well. Um, you just got to take the pipes off the bottom of it as well. Okay. And there is the cabling clip in there as well. And then this should, he says, just lift out. Look at that. There, there it all is. Yeah, one okay. box. Yeah. 
now that we've got the um, air box out then Matt is there anything else that we should be looking for over here yeah again we're just going to check the condition of the belts uh, make sure there's no leaks from anywhere nothing okay. obvious there's no water coming out of there anywhere no oil leaks we're all nice and dry um, everything's in its correct location uh, okay yeah. okay so we're now taking apart the air box There she is. Whoa, a bit of a collection in there. Oh, it's pretty clean to be fair. Yeah. But leaves. Yeah. No, not too bad. Just what you yeah. expect. A well maintained car. That doesn't look too bad at all. Here's a brand new one to compare it against. Okay, yeah, put it side by side. <laughs> there, <you go. laughs> there we go. There's the new one. Okay, so first thing then that we've done is we've had to remove the I've got a cover like here. A heat shield type yep, sort of thing. Heat is shield it? it is just to protect the coil packs from the exhaust. Um, okay, so this is the first part um, of, of changing the spark plugs. You can see there we've got uh, one of the three coil packs on this side. And you can see that there's another one there. And probably uh, another one just through there. Not sure if you can if you can see that, guys. But yeah, it's all a little bit tight underneath here. Uh, if I just bring this in, you just may be able to see the black square there. Okay, when? Okay, so this is the second coil pack coming out now. Squeezy out. There we is. Yep. Look at that. We've been re we've replaced these before for. Uh, misfire under load so it has had all six coil packs done in uh, previous work yeah have, <laughs> have a look at the picture guys i've got a picture of the um coil packs for when they were changed and you can see that they are pretty bad yeah due to the location on the porsche uh they get rather they, they get wet basically and uh then they start corroding internally and then you get like massive electrical breakdown when you're trying to load them up. But they are a right pain to change. Yeah, I can see that, especially this one. Yeah, this is probably the worst one. Yeah. And same on the other side. The one uh, closest to the back, behind the exhaust. So yeah, ideally you got to let it cool down for a while. I was going to say, you don't want to be doing this no, quick. Just no. come into the garage, yeah. do you? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the three coil packs out of the car now on the driver's side, and I must admit the one which is closest to the back of the car was a bit of a nightmare. Um, really obstructed by the exhaust and other bits and pieces of brackets, etc. So yeah, you, you need a bit of patience with that one, but the three on the driver's side are now out, so we're just gonna see if we can get the spark plugs out now. Where are we? <laughs> so, you smiling. <laughs> so there we go, the first one's out. <laughs> there we go, what's it looking like? Actually, not too bad, not at all. That's all right then. Good coloration, the electrode's not worn. Um, 
Yeah, they're not too bad at all. Excellent. We'll put them back in then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put new ones in. <laughs> Just looking at the uh, second plug, the engine coming out now, and there she is. How's that one looking? Mm. Again, not too bad Good. at all. Yeah, they must have been done at some point. Yeah, yeah. You can see the fact that there's copper grease on it before, it's like bronze effect. Oh, yeah, 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 see it. Yeah, the light's not particularly good. No. We're underneath the car in the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the third plug on the driver's side now, which is coming out. You can't really see a tremendous amount because we've got a, a guard in the way. Yeah. Exhaust mountains and all sorts. Yeah, there's <laughs> uh, a fair bit going on. Let's see if I can spin around to this side. But, uh, no, it's, what I've got is Matt Ham. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're about to come out anyway, so... Okay. There we go. And there's the other one. Yep. Looking good. If I come and over to this side where we haven't got any light, I might just be a little bit better to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. Yeah, we can yeah. take them outside afterwards and see, and yeah, I'll put them they, on the bench. They look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, yeah, all even, nice coloration, so they're all changed together. Excellent. All, all the combustion look good, so. Yeah, that's, that's as you'd excellent. expect. Yeah, brilliant, nice one. So all the plugs have now been changed, and these are the old ones here. You can see that the condition of them isn't really that bad. Um, but it's great to have some new ones put in it. You know, I know it's good now for many thousands of miles to put. So uh, there you go, guys. That's the, the old plugs. They did take a, a little bit of uh, time to do. The um, plugs on the passenger side, English uh, car, uh, were a lot easier uh, to change. Got a bit more room than the driver side ones. But that's them. And then we're going to be looking at removing this piece of plastic here. More plastic. A bit more plastic. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, it's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never stop that. So we're now going to be fitting the cabin filter. So the first thing to do is to remove the battery cover. And then we have this piece of trim here. Pops off really easy. And there you can see, there she is, just there, behind this uh, this uh, bracket here. So we're looking at uh, removing these two screws, and then we'll be able to get to the to the cabin filter. Dusty. Yeah, that looks uh, that was quite dirty just... compared to the uh, <laughs> the new one going in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that definitely needed doing. <laughs> so just to make sure there's no mess in there. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, there we are. Well, that's the cabin filter done. So the service is all done now, and Josh is about to stamp my service book for me. So there you go then, Josh. So we're good now for another 5,000 miles, and it just leaves me to say that thank you to Matt and Josh at Avon Auto Clinic for servicing the Porsche for me. And I look forward to coming back in the next couple of weeks where we're going to be fitting a performance exhaust pipe. So stay tuned for that one and we'll see you then. Take care, bye.